Okay, so you're looking at the front of the heart over here, and this is a lady who needs to have two bypasses done. Uh, one of them will be to the left anterior descending artery, which is the LAD on the front of the heart there. The other one to a vessel I'm pointing to here, the diagonal. The vessel going to the back of the heart, the circumflex is okay. And that one going to the right side, the posterior descending artery is simply too diseased to do anything with. Um, what you're seeing on the front over here is the right ventricle. Uh, because during development in utero, the heart rotates from the midline towards the left, and the right side of the heart comes to the front. The left ventricle is on the other side of the LAD, so the left anterior descending artery is the dividing line between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. You see the right atrium over here connected to the right ventricle, and barely visible, perhaps, the left atrium here, which at the back of the heart is connected to the left ventricle. Venous blood, or blood that's low in oxygen, comes back from the body into the right atrium, goes to the right ventricle, is then pumped out through the pulmonary artery to the, to, to the lungs, where carbon dioxide is removed, oxygen is added, and then it's returned by the left atrium to the left ventricle, and then ejected out through this vessel here, the aorta. The pressure in the left ventricle is much higher than that in the right ventricle because the pressure required to drive blood around the body through the aorta is much greater than the pressure required to drive blood uh, through the lungs, which is what the right ventricle does. The right ventricle is very thin-walled, which means if you get stabbed in the front of your chest, very unfortunate if you do, but if you do, it's very thin-walled and will bleed easily. If you get stabbed from the side and into the left, left ventricle, frequently those don't bleed as much because the muscle is so thick. Um, you notice on the surface of the heart you've got these darker looking vessels. Those are veins, coronary veins, which carry blood back that the heart itself has used uh, to be returned uh, to go through the same circulation route that we described. The venous blood in the heart um, is much darker than elsewhere because the heart, unique amongst all organs, including the brain, has the ability to extract more oxygen from the blood than any other, um, any other organ in the body, including, as I said earlier, the brain. Confirming what we all know, that the heart is more important than the brain, right? Absolutely. This patient does not have a normal functioning heart. I'm going to lift the heart up now. And you, you may begin to appreciate that the heart doesn't so much as contract as twist upon itself. If you look at the apex, I'm just gently lifting the heart here, Jane, okay? Nothing to be concerned about. You'll notice how the heart, in fact, contracts in itself. It's not particularly well demonstrated in this heart uh, because of the fact that this is not a normal heart. It's very weak. And this area of the heart, in particular, that we are going to do the bypasses to, uh, is not contracting as well as it should because it's not receiving enough blood. In a normal functioning heart, you would see a very vigorous twisting motion, uh, which is how the heart ejects blood, in a spiral motion. Very efficient way of ejecting blood spirally. Um, lots of analogies in, you know, around us and within us and without us about spirals, all the way from DNA through to acorns and galaxies. Uh, when you throw a football, you throw it in a spiral that gives you the most uh, uh, efficient trajectory, and that's how blood is ejected from the heart in a spiral fashion. In order to achieve that, um, the heart has to twist on itself. In fact, the heart is a single tube of heart muscle um, when it uh, first forms in the embryo at about four weeks. It then begins a process of folding upon itself, and in fact, that folding process is somewhat similar to a spiral folding. Um, so structure and function are, uh, in a sense, married to each other. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the bypasses now.